Okay. We are live, Melissa. Excellent. Great. Hi. Yes, this is Beth Rusky. Joining me is my dear partner and colleague, Melissa Thornley. Thank you, Melissa. Um, we decided uh, late on Friday and, and uh, we just put it together this morning to uh, host a webinar on how to engage in, uh, how to lead or host engaging virtual meetings. Because the world's gone a little crazy right now. Everybody knows it. Whew, take a deep breath. Um, whether it's you're being asked to social distance yourself or self quarantine, um, pretty much people are not doing business as usual. And there's a big disturbance about that. So what do you do? Well, due to this global impact, we actually are all looking for virtual meetings. And there's a way to host virtual meetings that make you feel like you're still connected and you're right next to each other. So today, that's what we're gonna talk about. At TR International, we've been doing and hosting virtual meetings for over a decade because of the global nature of our business. Uh, we have partners around the world and we have clients around the world. We don't sit in one room in one meeting place and have our meetings. And we've been doing that for a long time. So. Today, Melissa and I are going to talk about um, tips and ways to share with you so that you can have um, meetings that are productive, efficient, and feel like you're connected in a way that is if you're sitting right next to each other. So with that, Melissa, what else would you like to say as we kind of jump in here? I would love to say that virtual meetings in the past, I think, have gotten a bad rap. You know, we, we, we talk about, you know, making sure that your lipstick is on and you don't have to be wearing pants to have a virtual meeting. Um, just so you know, I am wearing pants. So Thank we're you. Good there. Yeah, Thank you for you're that. welcome. Um, but it's, it's actually a really great way to feel more connected to other people. Saturday night, for example, uh, some friends and I were going to go out dancing and we decided not to go. So we ended up doing a Google Hangouts and having drinks and hanging out virtually and it was really surprising i think to some of us how great that actually felt to be connected so it's important for us as business owners as team leaders as humans yeah i think you know uh you mentioned google hangouts at the start at the top here we're going to say there's a lot of different virtual platforms uh zoom zoom happens to be our favorite and the one that we use skype has been around forever and they've been a leader in the space google hangouts uh, FaceTime, WhatsApp, any others, Melissa, that jump off the top of your head? WebEx is one of them. Oh, yeah. And the face, yeah, using the Facebook video feature also. Great. All right. Well, we're going to jump right in and we're going to share our screen with you and walk you through some of the tips that um, we've used for over a decade now. Um, and, you know, of course, when we start and we're coming up with this, we like, we want to have a visual that really kind of is different. And uh, we want you to know that you are not alone on this leadership journey, because what the world needs now more than anything is your leadership. Each of us leading our lives in a way that recognizes how we impact everyone else. So um, we are all connected. This is a global issue. There are no borders right now, um, even though we might think there are. I mean, it, it can affect anyone anywhere. That's why being virtual is so important and feeling connected while we're being virtual is so important. So as we said, Melissa and I are um, gonna lead you through this. Uh, we're powered by Tier International, which is a great company that has been producing leadership development content for over a decade. So if you like us on Facebook, if you go to our website, it's tierrainternational.com, you'll find all kinds of tools there. And at the end, we'll talk about ways that you might be able to use some virtual tools to help you. Um, Melissa, let's just jump right in. Let's go to our intentions. Great. So we've got four things that we're going to cover today. Are you taking this or am I? <laughs> I let's, we can go back and forth. Well, okay. first of all, let's, let's, let's start out with the fact that we all recognize the world needs leadership right now and leadership can take many forms. So it's not just the leaders. We are the leaders of our lives. We are the leaders of our communities. We're the leaders of our families. And it starts with you and it starts with all of us. Awesome. The, the thing about that is we want to make sure that you to demonstrate how you can lead and truly connect to your team 
or to anybody virtually. Melissa had a dance party on Saturday night. I did see the pictures of the party. There were martinis involved. We're not saying that that's what you need to do at work, but we are saying that you can virtually connect to a team, to anyone, and we're gonna show you how. Exactly. And by doing this, you're creating a sense of empowerment to stay not only connected, but really effective, right? I know that, that there is this feeling of isolation and we can let that go. We can connect with each other and not just collude, but really be powerful and connected and effective. Yeah. You know, it's funny. Um, our other partner, Dr. Allison Miller, was explaining why everyone is buying toilet paper, which was kind of funny. And she said, it's a form of empowerment, like it's a form of control for us to actually feel like, well, we can control this one thing. Let's go do that by toilet paper. But what we are controlling here is this sense of empowering ourselves. It's easy to not feel empowered and to be victimized by circumstances. And that's going to come through isolation, but not if we can have some level of normalcy. And that's what virtual connections can do. Yeah. And it allows you to access your inner leader and encourage others to access their own leadership. So it's one of those things where it's a gift that keeps on giving. If you're not feeling full access to your inner leadership, you can connect in with someone else. Everybody encourages each other and we all rise up together that way. That's cool. So, yeah. Awesome. So let's jump into some tips. So we're going to talk about tips in a, in a couple of different ways. They were talking about engage, engaging virtual meetings, like tips for how do I have an engaging virtual meeting? Not how do I host a meeting so that people just kind of hang out and I talk for 30 minutes. That's not the game. So first of all, before you even schedule the meeting, think about who's going to be in attendance. For us, because we've got, I think we, we cross nine or 10 different time zones with our, with our team. So we have to be very clear about, well, what time are we going to host this meeting and how does it impact from the others around the world. Um, the other thing we want you to do is we want you to show your face. Like Melissa and I are up in the corner here right now, but if you can't be live on video, make sure you have a photo up there. Don't just be a black square, right? Show your face. People can connect to what you're saying, even in a picture if they can't see you talking. The other is um, at the start of your meeting, allow for informal connections to occur right off the start. You wouldn't walk into a meeting in a conference room, sit down and start talking about the meeting without looking at somebody and saying, how was your weekend? You know, how was the kid's wedding? Whatever, right? Like you would connect, still do that. You're just doing it virtually. The other thing that's really important is probably, but this is true. A lot of these tips, by the way, are true for any meeting. Know the why. Why are we together today? Why are we on in this room? Why are we having this meeting? Is it to brainstorm? Is it to inform everyone about something that's been decided? Is it to align on a course of action or move something forward? Or is it to make a final decision and move? All those are different ways that a meeting will actually take a form. And the last tip here as we start the meeting is be clear on how you want to show up and know what you need to do to show up that way. So if you want to show up relaxed and engaging, take a couple deep breaths, do what you need to do. Melissa, I know you talk about this all the time. Uh, your, one of your favorites is like uh, listening to a certain song or two. Yeah. You know, what, share that song. That's kind of cool. Oh, the, the song, my song for today, which I'll post on my Facebook later is I Go to Work by Cool Modi. And if that doesn't pump you up, I, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to tell you. Cool Modi, I go to work. Thank you. <laughs> So it doesn't matter what you do, but be clear on how you want to show up. You want to show up confident. You want to show up, you know, compassionate. You want to show up clear. You want to show up like you got your shit together. Doesn't matter. Like show up as you intend and do what you need to do in order to do that. Exactly. So there are some ground rules that you want to start the meeting with. And this is something that you can know in advance. You can design it with your team, but you want to do it before the meeting even gets going, right? So there are some obvious ones, like no multitasking, right? We all know about that. No multitasking. Um, keep off the email, keep off your phones while you're engaged with others. Comment to further the conversation. I mean, you want to be intentional and you want your comments to keep the momentum moving in the meeting. So make sure that your commenting is furthering and not detracting from the conversation. Speak up, 
Like expect that you have a role to play on that team and that you are going to lead from where you are. So expect to contribute. You know, As, oh, oh, go I, ahead. I like to say on that one, the speak up is, um, I've had, you know, leaders say over the course of my lifetime, you've been invited to this meeting for a reason. So not only show up, but speak up. Exactly. Exactly. And, and as the lead, it, when you're leading the call, and even if you are holding the floor for a bit, make sure that you allow space for and encourage questions. So sometimes in a virtual environment, people might have a question and maybe you're missing a cue. Ideally in a visual environment, you know, we have more opportunity to see, oh, wait a minute, do, does somebody have a question? You can almost feel it in the room, right? So there's that awareness that you can have virtually, but don't just rely on that. You know, people might not be as prone to speak up with a question when they're in a virtual meeting. So ask for questions. Don't just dump all of the information and data on them and keep moving forward. Really allow and encourage questions. I, I think it's funny. People tend to, in a virtual meeting, um, especially if it's your meeting, if you're the leader of it, it's kind of like a race to how much information can I data dump? You know, it's like, whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa, slow the roll, slow down. It's still a meeting. Exactly. Well, and even right now, you know, we've got a presentation that's going, we have information that we're conveying to people out there. And at the same time, we're doing it in a conversational format. So keeping that conversation and keeping that humanity, whether we're virtual or whether we're sitting right next to each other is key. Agreed. So um, assigning roles for the call. So you may want somebody that is in charge of note taking. You may have somebody taking minutes, right? Um, you also might want to have people in charge of timekeeping. So allotting a certain amount of time for a topic or a certain amount of time for people to speak or even just the time of the meeting itself. Once again, a lot of these tips are good for either virtual or in-person meetings. The last thing is other. You know your team. You know what is going on with your team. There may be some specific things that you need to cover. If it's manufacturing, maybe there are safety issues. Um, it's your team. Make sure that you give your team the opportunity to help you design the ground rules. So those are ground rules. Those are ground rules. Again, and with the ground rules, put them up at the start of every meeting. A lot of companies actually, and a lot of our clients, they host ground rules, you know, on a whiteboard in the corner. So they're always present. So mm -hmm. don't assume people remember the ground rules. They won't. So here's some tips for what you can do during the meeting. First of all, you have to get everyone present in the room. There's a lot of different ways of doing that. Um, one of our favorite things is asking, asking people, what's one great thing that's happened to you in the last 24 hours? Or... Give us two words how you're coming to the room, you know? So like you actually get people in the room and we don't just mean like, oh, I wanna hear from one or two people. We actually mean every person on the call shares this. And some people say to us, well, that's a lot of time to waste at the beginning. It's not wasted time. It's a form of connection. It holds people accountable to be on the meeting and it makes sure that everybody understands we're people here and we're moving our project forward. Melissa, talk about this one, act as if. We've, we've played around with this one a little bit. Yeah, so it's sort of like play pretend. I mean, I, I right now feel like Beth is in the room with me and she's not, she's miles away. And I was offered some food earlier and Beth said, oh, hey, I'll have, I'll have one of those as well, right? We just kind of act as if we're in the room together and it keeps, you know, segue into the next one. It keeps a lighter frame of mind and it keeps a lightness in the, in, in the virtual room. Yeah. You know, and the lightening up is really important because people cannot control what's going on. At the start of this, I heard banging in my other room. I'm not sure if you all heard it, but I sure did, right? There's stuff going on. You know, I've done Facebook lives and all of a sudden my land, the landscaper two doors down where if I'm working from my home office, all of a sudden like lights up every power tool possible. I mean, stuff is gonna happen around you, lighten up. Um, the other thing is we love this phrase is be mutable. So, you know, a lot of times on calls like this, if there's a lot of background noise, we'll tend to mute everyone and we'll ask you to come off mute. A lot of people think they're not making noise. We've had people washing dishes and we're like, hey, somebody's washing dishes. Turn the, put it on mute or turn it off. 
We had one guy eating popcorn once, which was hilarious. You know, it's like, okay, whatever you're eating, you can't share it with us. So put yourself on mute. So be mutable as a form of, you know, respect. The, the background noise, the typing is one. A lot of times if people think you're going to be multitasking then. So if you happen to be somebody who types and takes notes that way, make sure you've let your, your team know, hey, by the way, this noise, I'm not multitasking. I'm actually taking notes. Let people know. You want to cover these last couple ones? Yeah, um, there are some great tools that you can use with the variety of platforms that are out there. So number one, you can record calls. If there are going to be key people that won't be able to make the call, record it and, and, and send it along maybe with some pointers or with some action items that go with it. But record that call. Be sure to make sure that you let people on the call know that they're being recorded because they might not notice the little red dot that's going to be going on. Um, also, tools like annotate, chat, breakout rooms. Uh, as the technology improves, there's more and more to use to really create that lifelike experience. So knowing the technology, maybe do a little tutorial on YouTube or something so that you really understand it so you can maximize the effectiveness for your calls. One of the things that we've done, um, because we have a global sales team meeting once a month, and we use that annotation to start the meeting we have a question that we put up on a shared screen like this, and then everyone starts typing away. And it is such a time saver because first of all, you can't, you can't speak in paragraphs or you could speak in paragraphs, you can't type in paragraphs when you're typing that fast, you type in bullets. And then everyone gets to share very quickly. So it's another different way to get people in the room, but it's a use of the technology and the tool that's very simple and very easy. Okay, close the meetings. You wanna close the meeting, Melissa? Well, let's close the meeting. So uh, before you close the meeting, and these are all great for live in-person meetings as well, ensure there's alignment with your team on next steps, right? You wanna make sure that before everybody goes off into the wilderness, that they know what is going on, right? Whether it's alignment on the intention or alignment on particular steps, you want to know that. You also want to know who has ownership of what. So if there are action items involved, be clear. And if you've got a question, you know, obviously you want them to be specific. Okay, by when using clear requests and clear agree clear agreements there, um, but be clear. And then have an opportunity for everybody to sign off. Maybe you're using the action items as, as the sign off. Everybody goes around and takes ownership for what they are going to do between now and the next meeting to forward the momentum. Maybe it's just allowing everybody to say goodbye. Maybe it's everybody telling you how they're leaving the meeting. Okay, I'm leaving this meeting a little confused, but I'm going to follow up with so and so and I'll get clear. Or I'm leaving empowered and I can't wait for our next meeting. Go team. Whatever it is, give somebody, give everybody an opportunity to actually sign off so people aren't just slipping off into the, into the mist. Which actually reminds me, if you do need to leave a virtual call early, if you don't feel like you can interrupt, you can always use the chat feature to say, hey guys, I really have to hop on the next call. And that way people don't feel an abrupt loss of your presence because people will notice it. Yeah, that's that's perfect. I do like that. Is I, I like to say, when you walk in your home, you say hello to the people around you. When you leave your home, you say goodbye to the people around you. Well, you do that at work too. You don't walk out the door and just you know walk out of a meeting and not say goodbye to people. So. Closing off the meeting is perfect too. So um, some final thoughts for you. Um, this is the wisdom according to us. Being authentic beats trying to be perfect. Like Melissa and I couldn't be perfect if we tried. <laughs> we really couldn't be. And sometimes, so we kind of don't try to be perfect. We try to be us and we try to be very, very good. But that's about it. Melissa, read the next one. <laughs> We've got, um, we'll recognize people are stretching into new comfort zones. Some people just do not feel comfortable on camera. Some people don't feel comfortable um, working in a different environment. A lot of people are gonna be working in new environments where they're not used to working. So, you know, recognize that and provide some graciousness. I just skipped to the end, but, but being gracious about the fact that people are stretching is huge. And that includes being gracious to yourself, right? Got it. So I'll add the last bullet there, which is actually the third bullet, is to lead virtually, leading virtually is a skill. 
it does get better over time. I think back to three or four years ago when we were first doing video, oh my gosh. Now it's like, okay, you got five minutes, figure out what you're gonna say. We're jumping on a call, bam. You know, so just know that it does get better and nobody expects you to be perfect, you know. And perfection is overrated anyhow, right? <laughs> it's true. So uh, yeah, you got this, you got this. So how do you engage in a virtual meeting? You just do it. These were quick tips. Melissa and I wanted to throw these out there so that everyone could get a sense of, okay, in all the craziness and all the things that are changing around me, you've got control over this. It's not difficult. Some of you have done it already. You've been doing it for a long time. Teach other people, bring them along with you. If it's new to you, just follow some of these best practices. You'll figure it out as you go. You do got this. I like that visual. And we are a virtual company. Tierra International is a virtual leadership company and we do have clients around the world. We've been practicing this for a very long time. We have virtual tools at our website, Tierra International, tierraleadership.com. So go there. We have a resource circle for women and it's all women, not just business women or professional women, it's all women. And we have different tools. We have a virtual tool library for you to download at your own, at your own pace, at your own skill. So that's tierraresourcecircle.com. So we hope you'll find some useful tips somewhere, somewhere along the line, whether from us or other people, and we hope you'll share them. Final yeah. word before we end the meeting, Melissa. <laughs> be kind, be creative, be gracious, and just keep on keeping on. We all, we all, we all got this. And remember your own power. Wonderful. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks. Thanks, Beth.